Hello everyone, Rev here, and today I want to showcase my first review for my channel about Valheim, a game that recently came to early access a couple of weeks ago. Um, my first impressions were pretty good, and I think uh, this game has a lot of potential behind it. So let's get to the gritty details then, yeah? Uh, let's cover the sound. First of all, Valheim has a fantastic music track that totally sets the mood for whatever is happening during your time in this Norse-inspired world. The gentle guitar playing as the breeze blows softly while you chop down a tree to build your longhouse, or a hardcore death metal like band just comes out of nowhere and plays this music and makes you feel like you're a murder machine fighting a boss in a forest is all really well done. There's not actually a metal band that comes out of the forest, by the way. I wish, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, sound effects are pretty good too, with monsters making noises when they move or attack as well as you when you swing your weapon or let loose an arrow from your bow. There are a couple of things that are a little jarring, such as the deer and the boars, for example. The deer often makes this barking or ape-like sounds when you spook them by accident, or just in general, it seems. The boars are kind of worse off since they make these guttural sounds that are more frightening than fighting a troll would be, for example. Overall, pretty decent sound design, except for the demonic deers and boars. Now, the graphics in Valheim isn't exactly the best looking out there, but it does uh, work with it, what it has, and that's pretty good. One way I would describe the graphics in this game is that it's very similar to Witchet. Uh, it's only done better with the low-res polished polygons that come together nicely. The weather system is super detailed to the point where I have been fooled into thinking that it was really raining outside my apartment. It's pretty, pretty intense. The lighting is where the game can really be immersive visually since you can see the warm colors of the rising sun and the cool cold colors of the full moon on a night. My system is kind of beefy, so I can run it at max settings no problem, but even if you can't run it at max settings, the game still manages to look good without compromising too much on the visuals and performance. And now we're going to get to the big beefy part about the gameplay. The gameplay uh, is what you would expect from any survival game, but with little things kind of tweaked here and there, and then adjusted to it being not so tedious and, and it's more streamlined without it being too shallow. Like you could go and cut wood, gather stone, berries, meat, and other resources until you're capable of taking on the more, uh, uh, more of the content the game provides than rinse and repeat, essentially. But it's done pretty well. Like it's entertaining to do as opposed to tedious and annoying. You still have to build or, or find a house to live in, of course, which isn't tedious at all in this game, surprisingly. It's very easy. Uh, eases. <laughs> it's very easy to do. Eating in the game is kind of different where uh, you have to like eat a variety of foods to gain bonuses to your health and stamina and you don't necessarily die from starving which is kind of cool but if you don't like eat a hearty meal you tend to be a little weaker and you're more easily killable by the monsters that roam in the world um, which by the way there's plenty of You'll face off against graylings, uh, graybeards, skeletons, trolls, necks, and even ghosts. Each type has its strength and weaknesses, you know? And that's just the ones I've met. I'm sure there's more monsters out there that I haven't even seen yet. <laughs> I've only played this game for about like 15 hours, so here I am. But uh, each of these uh, mobs, though, have like their strengths and weaknesses. Like the skeletons tend to like hit kind of hard because they have weapons but they're easily like smashable with a mace and graylings are pretty scared of fire but otherwise pretty dumb so you can easily take them on and uh, so on and so forth. There is a multiplayer in this game which is pretty neat. You can have about up to 10 people in one session and it's lots of fun when you're working together with your friends taking all the challenges of this game together since the difficulty scales with how many people are given uh, in a given server. Uh, however, there are times when there are like four or more people, or even four or less in my in the case, that uh, it starts to lag out the game a little bit. Which, you know, netcoding's a bitch, I understand that. And the game's still in early access, so can't fault it too much for that. And I'm sure they'll work on it, but it, it can be a little jarring at times, because I'll be, I'll be like trying to hunt deer or whatever, and uh, the deer are just somehow rubber bands like back to where it was or trying to aim it and just for some of you who don't know 
rubber banding is a term where uh, the game's like taking a minute to communicate with the server or whatever the game is hosted on. So when there's a lag in that, uh, basically like, you know, you'll your computer's saying, no, the deer's here, but it then it communicates with the server and it's like, oh wait, never mind, it's actually here. But it just happens really jarringly or it takes a minute for the computer to actually catch up. That's what rubber banding means. But anyway, it's mildly infuriating, but not the end of the world. Now, uh, supposedly there's partial controller support for this. I haven't tried it myself, but you know, there it is. Now the story for Valheim, is a bit vague on what's happening, but you're supposedly a warrior that died and was brought to Valheim by a Valkyrie to prove your worth to Odin kind of deal. Then the game starts from there. I don't mind if uh, they add, don't add a story, but it would be cool if they did, If once it gets more fleshed out and added into the game later on down the road. Honestly, my opinion on this, guys, is that this game doesn't really bring a whole lot of new things to the genre. But despite of that, it's uh, it does bring a very refined edition that's more playable for people who are just casual and for people who just want to have a more immersive time, you know? In this awesome world that the devs want you to experience. And that's awesome because a uh, balance to have, you know, for a game like this, especially in these times, you know. I totally recommend this game to anyone, especially since it's only like $20 in the United States or 16 ish euros if you're into that sort of thing. But, anyways, that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, feel, or feel more informed, or even both. In which case, uh, like, subscribe, and commenting will help appease the algorithm gods that be. And every bit helps, and is very much appreciated. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.